All right, morning. So everybody ready for their MBA from all the notes from Christie's talk? Did you take notes during Christie's talk? Okay, because that was some good stuff. <laughs> um, I think I have probably the worst title, um, just because it's really, 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 really long. Um, but, and we're not going to diagram it. So it's managing clients, increasing your value, thinking about long term, uh, or as I like to call it, sort of in the shorthand, how to level up as a freelancer. Who here is a freelancer? Outstanding. Okay. Uh, those who didn't raise your hands, were you freelancers? A few more. Okay. For those who didn't raise their hands, what do you do? <laughs> no, no, I mean, just, just shout out. Seriously, what do you do? Are we products, agencies, hosting companies? Okay. Business owners. Okay, excellent. Business owners should be up here. <laughs> I think we need to do that. Okay. Um, anybody bowl? Anybody? Okay, I see some hands doing this. That's me. You like you throw the ball down the lane and maybe it gets there. You know those rails on the side? Does anybody use those? Other than me? Okay, up there. Yep, I'm with you. You're those rails to your clients. You're those rails to your customers. Um, if you're you know building products, if you're building sites, you're in client services. Your job is to keep your customers going down that path to their goal. You want them to get there. You don't want them to go flying off. You don't want to cross lanes. It doesn't count if the ball crosses lanes. I, uh, I thought I had a strike, but I took somebody else's pins out. So you want to keep them going down that nice, safe path all the way down to get to where they're trying to go. That's what you really want to do. You don't want to write code. You don't want to like have cool images. You want them to succeed. So that's that's your job if you're working with client services, if you're selling products that help people do something, that kind of thing. Once you start thinking about that as opposed to, yeah, okay, I'm a freelancer and I write cool websites or I uh, threw a plugin up on the repo or, you know, I came up with this really awesome template or whatever, then you're changing your mindset. That's the first thing you want to do. Remember to keep your clients going down that path, not just telling them that you write code. You're developing a process for increasing your value and what you can do for your customers. And there we go, does it work? And you are always thinking about sales. So taking those practices, those principles, uh, the charts that aren't that old from the 80s. Um, <laughs> there we go. Um, I hate having to say that now. Now I sound like my dad. But those, those principles don't change. They're all still good. They're all still important. And even if you're freelancing or even if uh, you, know, you, you're, you just started your small business or you just you know, hired your first employee, they're still very, very valuable. And so what I wanted to do is kind of go into that in a bit more of an, app, of an applied manner using these three sort of big buckets of thought. First mindset. I took this from a lot of bullets and I sort of refined it down and I think I'm probably going to have to like re-upload my deck because I changed it from what I put up there what was it, last week or whatever. Um, tone and what's the why are probably the best ways to sort of describe at the biggest level possible the mindset shift that you want to do. And it, don't worry about the order, which one's on top, which one's second. Uh, we'll start with tone. How do you see yourself? And how do you present yourself? That's the first biggest thing. I come from a freelancing background, did it for a long time just on my own. Uh, partnered with some other people. We did a lot of collaboration. Uh, this open source thing was really awesome. We could work together, but still be competitors. Uh, we'd still work out of the same co-working space, but you know, lean, lean back in the chair and go, hey, didn't you do this last week? Oh yeah, sure, let me show you this code that I was working on. That's awesome, 
that's, that was amazing. It's like old school business wouldn't do that. It'd be like, well, no, get away. This is, you know, you go do your thing, and, but I'm going to try to see what you're doing, but I'm not going to tell you. It was just very cutthroat, not really competitive. The collaboration and that all, you know, that's all awesome. It's great. You know, we get t-shirts at WordCamps. T-shirts are awesome. T-shirts are great. But when you're going out to the client world, you're going out and you're talking to customers, you can do that for a long time and be totally happy and totally cool. If you want to bring things up to the next notch, you want to shift your thinking. You're not a freelancer. You're a business person. You want to present yourself as a business person. You want to present your business as a business. So little things you can do just starting in your brain, that's the first thing. Because once you start thinking it, then you can start acting on it. And it does kind of change how you present yourself. That plays into all of the dealings with your customers with the what's the why. Who, developers? Okay, how many times when somebody says, so I've got this problem, and I need to come in and I need to get a new site. And you start asking them about this, you know, okay, well, tell me what you want to do. Cool, do you have designs? What are you thinking? Oh, yeah, okay, we can build that. We've done this. You know, yeah, the other day we worked on that. You might also want to think of this. But never in that train of little blurbs that I just said, which are things that I've said many times in conversations with people that I ask, what is it you're trying to do? Don't start with the, uh, you know, the code, the, 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 the what's, the, 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 you know, oh, yeah, this is, you know, we can do this. It's what is it you're really trying to do? Does anybody recognize this woodcut? Okay. It's the blind men, on the, blind men and the elephant. This is a Japanese woodcut of a parable that goes back mid-first century BCE, in the Indian subcontinent. It's in Buddhism, it's in Sufi, it's, it's, this stuff goes back big time. You've got an elephant, for those who don't know, you've got an elephant and the parable is these five blind men come up and each one, you know, has a different part. This guy's got the trunk, this guy's got an ear, this guy's got a foot. Every single one of them is like, oh, it's an alligator. No, it's a snake. This is obviously a big, a big rock wall. This is true throughout life. They don't realize the totality of what they're looking at. When you're talking to your customers and you're talking to your clients, if you're not asking them, what's the business problem that you're trying to solve? What is it you're having difficulty with? What is it you're wanting this to do? If you don't start from there, you know, you're going to be over here going, we've got this awesome solution. And you come back six weeks later and you go, hey, here's this great thing. And they're like, well, yeah, but that doesn't really do what I need to do. I, I had heard, I've heard that so many times in my freelance life. This, is, this looks great. This looks cool. But it's not really what I was looking for. It's not really this. Because I didn't ask those questions about what they were trying to solve, and I didn't listen to them tell me what they, were, you know, what they really had trouble with. So I started in the wrong direction. I had a great plug-in. Didn't do anything for them, though. So. So what's the business problem? That's the first big sort of mindset shift you want to do. If you're doing that, you're not, you're, you're doing great. I mean, if you're starting from this area, you're, you're doing great. Keep going in that direction. I, uh, De Dev's in the room. Okay, I apologize, but don't sound like a dev. If you're a freelancer, you're not just a dev, you're the business owner, you're the marketing department, you're the, you're the accounting department, your finances, your development, you might be designed to, your account management, you're all that. So when you are talking to your customers, you put that account management hat on, you put that sales rep hat on, you put that business analyst hat on. So don't sound like a dev. Presentation, we talked about that a little bit. Um, Sort of going into that, you know, not asking them what their business problem is. You know, eager and helpful are great. If you're a developer, we want to solve problems. We hunger for that. We're like, oh, yeah, tell me something doesn't work because I want to get in there. And, like, first thing I want to do is, like, view source. What do, we, what do you got here? Okay. What does XDebug say? I mean, I want to get in. I want to, like, solve it. That's awesome. 
That's why we hire devs, because devs want to solve problems. That's, that's just amazing. But don't jump the gun. Just kind of, you know, slow down just a sec, you know, take a breath, figure out the right direction, then get into it. Um, the other thing is, are you, uh, I, I, I tried to, I tried to like write down sort of a script in my head of all the times, you know, you're, you're listening to a customer and they say, well, I want to do this. And as a dev, you know, like, I don't know if we can do that, but okay, right there, you just killed the conversation. I don't know if I can do that or no, it doesn't really work that way. It sounds silly if you've never thought about it, but just saying things with no, I don't know, that uncertainty, that, that negativity, even if you're still saying, well, yeah, we can do all this stuff, but I don't know about that. That little verbal tick is a killer. Because remember, the customer's over here. They may or may not be technical, but what they are is they're trying to solve a problem. And they may be just nervous. And the minute you say no, whatever just came after that, even if it's an awesome idea, they're still hearing no. They're absolutely hearing no. And I was very, very, very skeptical of that at first. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I just said we could do this. Well, yeah, but right over here, I said the word no. You know, and I'm, you know, my mother was a teacher. My dad was uh, an English teacher. My mom was math and computer science. So for me, I'm like, no, wait, no, let's, I said we could do this. These words came out of my mouth. They were there. You're, yeah, you're laughing, but you know, I mean, you know, it's, it's like, they're like, you said no over here. So everything that else that just came out, their brain stopped. And they're like, oh, crap, this guy doesn't know how to do this. Okay, we're going to have to find somebody else. We're going to have to go over here. And the sale's gone. That's it. It's, it's, it's done. They may come back, but that opportunity just got lost because the word no came out, or I don't know if we can do this. So yes and, Kareem knows that phrase, but he's not looking up. Yes and, million times better than no. You know, you, you, you want to say, well, let's say like, you know, I want to build this and that. And, you know, and you're thinking, Ooh, okay, yeah, I don't know about that. You're like, that's a great idea. Let's dig into that some more. Let's investigate it. Never in that did I say the word no. It sounds silly. If you've never done this, it sounds ridiculous. This is like pop psychology 101 or some freaking TV show thing where they're telling you, you know, if you believe it, it can be done. It's true. Just the, the, the word shift. It's part of that mental shift. I learned that painfully the hard way as just a solo dev. And it wasn't until somebody I, I'd known for a while and I got to watch them do a call with a customer and I was like, what did you just do there? And it, it took me a long time to figure that out. Um, the last part, the mindset. Uh, are you a, so who's, who's a vendor for their clients? A vendor? Uh, okay. Who's a partner with their clients? Okay. Way more hands. That's what it needs to be. That's part of that mindset shift. Are you a vendor to your clients? Is it a client vendor relationship that you have, or are you a partner with your clients? And I don't necessarily mean contractually we're partners and whatever, blah, 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 blah. But you sit on the same side of the table of a problem with your client not on the opposite end of them saying, I'm gonna pay you for this, and you're like, great, cool, here you go, here's your thing. It's, it's that, that way you approach troubles that your client has, problems that your clients have, when they come to you and they can't figure something out. It's we, it's not um, I, it's, it's that, that inclusivity that you wanna foster there because that, get, that keeps them coming back. And when clients come back, you're, that's, that's where you want to be. You want them to come back. You don't have to go market to them again. So they're there. They're there with you. And they're, they're hopefully there with you past the initial project on to more and more. Okay. Process. Process is, for me, this was the hardest thing for me to do as a dev. Because it's boring. I hated it. I don't want to do paperwork. I don't want to sit here and like model stuff out. I just wanted to write code. But this will save your butt. Um, process creates order. Order is the mortal enemy of chaos, and chaos is never, never good. 
You don't want chaos. Scared clients run away. They don't come back. So take the time. Do the business process stuff. Do that business logic stuff. Sit down and get your paperwork squared away. It's boring. I want to write code. Yes, I know. I get it. This is my voice in my head all those years. I, was just, I hated this stuff, but do it. Because once you do it, once you have a process in place, you can iterate on a process. You can revise it. Don't try to make it perfect out the box, but get something in there and stick to it. Uh, documentation as well, that's part of it, which everybody loves documentation. So process, um, when you're talking with the client and they say, okay, I wanna do this, awesome, great. You walk away, do you, do you know exactly what it is that you're doing? Is everybody clear on the next steps? Do they know what they're doing? Do you know what you're doing? Do, you, do they know, you know, do you guys have everything clear? Um, do they have their hosting set up? Do they know when you're getting the design? Do you know when you're getting the designs? You know, you're supposed to start development here. Did you get those designs? Is that in paper somewhere? Did you get a date? Um, when, when did they want to launch? When was that? Okay, we got to work on, you know, you got to ask all these questions. Um, you don't want to be launching over Christmas. Been there. Sitting in the truck, going up to grandma's house with the laptop tethered because I didn't get the follow back follow up from them on when something was going to happen. So the processes that you want to put into there, make sure that everybody's on the same page. So that's your contracts, that's your development timelines, that's your follow ups, um, that's responding back to them in emails by restating the problem, by just saying, even if you know everybody said the same thing, putting it in that email, because that way you can always go back and refer to it. Or they might go, oh yeah, I forgot all this, uh, this one other thing. Gives them an opportunity to re-clarify everything with you. So getting everybody on the same page, that's the, one of the biggest advantages of process and coming up with that, so make sure that that happens. Are you sure everybody's on the same page? Because you got, you know, no, seriously. I mean, I've asked this of devs who've talked to the customer, and I'm like, okay, so when, you know, I just immediately I can think of three things to ask. Um, go ask them again. Don't tell me um. If you start with um, just go, you know, go ask them again. Because if I'm going to be up late, they're going to be up late. Okay. What this is doing is this is setting clear expectations. Um, our, our, our COO will hammer this into your head until it is tattooed on the inside of your skull. And he's right, it's setting clear expectations. It's not being a jerk about it. It's just being, look, this is this, this is this, this is this. The sky is blue, the floor is brown, the trees are green. We're all good here, yes, 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 okay, boom. It's the same way with the process. We're launching when? Okay, we're launching here. Okay, when are we doing our QA? Okay, our QA takes this long. Okay, what day is it today? That's here. Okay, that's this much time. Does everybody know that it's this much time? Does the client know it's this much time? Do you have those five things from the client? Well, okay, when are you gonna get those five things from the client? I mean, it's just, you've gotta drill it in over and over and over again. Clear statements of work, that's your lifesaver. That sets this. Uh, freelancers, anybody who, who has good contracts? There needs to be more hands than that. <laughs> who has contracts? Okay, great. So that delta between all the hands that were up just now and the hands that were up earlier, that's the difference. So that you, that's, let's bring that closer together. Um, more hands came up that said they had contracts. That is awesome. Start with that. Make sure that you can bring those up iteratively over time and improve them a bit by bit because when you get that clear statement of work, delivery item one is this, and it's gonna be here. It's gonna come in on this date. Delivery item two is this, and it's coming here. It's gonna be on this date. All that stuff, uh, just there's no questions. There's that certainty. There's that lack of fear. Clients love that. Clients will yell, they'll scream, they'll holler, I don't know about this date, you know, whatever, can we push it back? 
but you've got something on paper and everybody agrees to it, they signed it, everybody's on the same page, you can work from that. Things are obviously gonna change. I mean, who's ever started a project that at the very beginning and at the end was the exact same throughout? Nobody. Okay. Did, did anybody go through that and not get a change order? Okay, did anybody just not get the other stuff they asked about done? I've, I've done that. I don't know if we can do that. That goes back to that saying no thing. Um, things should always change. It's just how it goes. You start a project, something new and shiny comes out, you want to add it to the project. What's, who, who has a good way of, of addressing that? How, how would you address that to your client? Oh, can we do these three things? What's the verbal response? I'm just curious if anybody has like a, this is how I would answer that. You are the man, yes. <laughs> That's a great idea for phase two. You didn't say no. The client's like, oh cool, I can get that. And you just got their mindset for a change order. Never ever, you know, give up an opportunity for somebody to give you money. So you should, under, you should have that anticipation of managing change. Uh, if you don't have a change order template started, Make one. Okay, if you didn't write it down, it's not real. This is gospel. Absolutely gospel. This is even, I, I think I said earlier, you know, uh, recap the call, send them the bullet points in an email, thank them for the time, all that. That's why, right here. Yes, it, it, it's, it's friendly. It shows that professionalism, and you have that extra opportunity to be courteous with your client. Everything else is great, but this is right here. Because in six weeks, when they yell at you for whatever, whatever, kill them with kindness, don't yell back, but forward the email back to them, you know, et cetera, as seen here, yada, 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 we'd love to have a conversation about this, you know, yada, yada. Most of the time, they're going to be like, you're absolutely right. That, okay, yeah, I forgot. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, every now and then you can get the ones that are just, it's probably best to walk away from. Um, the other part of this is, this is that documentation bullet here. This is documentation. Documentation is not just formatting the, the little notes in your code. Uh, it's understanding your clients. Uh, make a dossier on your clients. Who are they? What's their business? Um, what market are they in? What's their growth look like? I mean, some of them, you know, you may not, you may not know like the, the, the Hoover's business analyst profiles of all your clients. They may not even be in there. None of my clients were when I were freelancers. But, you know, we had the, the, the dry cleaning shop. They were opening four new locations. Okay, I wrote that down. That was a note because they're growing. Um, they've been around for 50 years. Okay, they're not going anywhere. They're stable. I mean, these little notes, these little details, uh, who are the stakeholders in the business? Who are the people that, like, who's their head tech guy? You know, go find out who that, uh, who's, or tech guy, tech woman. I mean, you just, you got to know these things. So these are those little details of understanding the client because then you can anticipate the things that they might need. That makes you more valuable. Know your own stuff, too. Which projects are most profitable for you? Which types of projects are the most fun for you? That's hugely important. You know, know these things and look for patterns because then you can, you know, kind of go, go beautiful on everything and just go, ah, this is the type of work we want to do. This is the type of client we want to work with. When you have that opportunity to learn those things, that's, that's when you do your growth. And that happens because you write things down. Okay. Third bullet, sales opportunities. Never, ever, ever pass up a chance for someone to give you money. Be the snake charmer. Be the person who can, who can have those conversations with clients. And instead of saying no, and instead of saying, ah, you know, that's what, you know, work with them. Help them through those difficult times because they're going to they're gonna remember you're the one that helped them solve that problem. They're going to come back to you. Scope creep. I used to hate scope creep. Hate it, hate it, hate it with a passion. It's context switching. 
I'm in my brain space, I'm working through code, I'm writing all this stuff down, and then the client goes, eh, here's a wrench, and you gotta change direction. And that's it, my brain's derailed, I've gotta completely rethink the problem, I've gotta completely rethink the solution, all of that. that scope creep, it's a horrible, horrible thing, except it's an absolutely wonderful business opportunity. It's the phase two, it's the change order, it's the, that's a great idea. Let's look at that in terms of scope and budget for the project. And that's that opportunity to be the partner with your client to sit down and, ha and work through them, with them, what they're looking to have done. Not to tell them no, but to sit there and go, awesome, let's look at it. And then carry them to that realization of, okay, well, yeah, well, let's, let's we can do with that, that, that for now, but when could we get that in there? And you get that change order template, throw it out there. Um, retainers and maintenance. This is a, a, another sales opportunity. If, if you don't do it, it's something to think about doing. Um, this, you know, connecting dots. As a freelancer, I had a couple of good years. I had a, one year where it was like, it was, it was like being on one of those roller coaster rides where you literally think your stomach, liver, and spleen are going to come up. I, I, you know, feast or famine, four projects come in at once. I'm one person. I'm not sleeping for a while. They all launch, and I ain't got crap. Now I got to go chase more projects. And so I'm down here, and then I get, you know, and so it's just your business cycle looks like this. After doing some research on the clients, after studying them a bit, figuring out, you know, who got me the most money, who got me the most return projects, what types of clients were they, what type of work was I doing for them? I was like, well, set up a maintenance agreement. You know, X amount of bandwidth a month, something like that, figure out some, some maybe, you know, I, I was gonna do the package thing, you know, all the little plugins have the little three comparison column things that every single bootstrap website has on them. Put that on my website. 30 bucks, 80 bucks, 200 bucks, whatever. And this, you get this many hours of work and this much work and this much work and I update WordPress and you know, it's all this stuff. And it, it worked. I got three, four clients on that. Um, you know, I, I did no contract, I did like no, uh, no long-term contract. It was like month to month, but I had cancellations in there. I'm like, you're not gonna cancel on me on the 28th of the month and tell me you're not gonna pay me. It's like, <laughs> you know, you're gonna give me four weeks notice before you cancel, but. Like somewhere in there, I got to kind of do some protection for myself. But And you also can't bank all your stuff until the 28th of the month and then tell me you want to get it all done in two days. It's not going to happen. So, you know, some of those little things, I had to do some mental, mental hoops and sit down with my wife who had her MBA and go, okay, help me out here. And she helped me write all that. But the point of it is, is those roller coaster dips started flattening out because when I didn't have all those projects come in, I had the retainer stuff there that, you know, it, it wasn't the same by all means, but I wasn't dipping down to here and freaking out for, you know, for however much, you know, however long that ramp up till the next projects were. It may or may not be you. It worked great for me. Um, and, and I would, you know, I would encourage you to look at it as something you might think about. Um, you know, with managed hosting providers, a lot of the basic stuff of, oh, I'll update your plugins, I'll update WordPress. Which managed hosting providers don't do that these days? So you got to think of more creative things to have that value add to your customers. But it's it's worth looking at, especially if your customers are coming to you over and over again for little smaller, piddly little stuff. Oh, I want to you know new a new page template or something like that. Maybe figure out a way that that type of work you can just sort of push into some sort of you know monthly contract kind of thing. If you don't do that yet and this is a, you know, something that you bring into, one of the great benefits of it is you build a portfolio of contracts. That is business value. So your business value for however long these contracts are, you're just, you, you know, oh, I'm worth this much, I'm worth this much, I'm worth this much, you know, because those are contracts. You've got those contracts in place. That brings with it a sense of stability. You're in for the long haul. You know, that's a promotional thing that you can use. That, that, you know, you're not the guy sitting with the laptop in front of the coffee shop, just kind of chilling out, writing, 
projects, launching websites. No, you've got a portfolio. You have a business. You have, you know, professionalism. Okay. Perfect timing. This is me, uh, Pat Ramsey, uh, Director of Technology at Crowd Favorite, and I thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pat. Um, how many years have you been working with the um, Crowd Favorite? Crowd Favorite, three, four. And, four. and how long have you been working in that space? How much experience would you say you have? My first version of WordPress was 1.2 beta. So, so he knows a little bit about a little bit. So you were talking to us about um, asking the business problem. Um, could you give an example of a time that you backed out of a, a web build um, to actually analyze and look at the business problem, identify that? Uh, the question is, is there a time when I backed out of a, backed out to just kind of say, okay, we got to stop and let's look at the business problem. I did. There was a social media marketing company in 2010, 2009, 2010. Uh, this, is, this is when all of the, the companies would send like three interns to South by Southwest and say, you're the social media managers, go. And so everybody was getting into that. How do we monetize that space? How do we get the numbers for big business in social media? So w I was working on a new website for them. Six weeks into it, they completely just kind of like, well, I want to do this, and we're also going to do this. And when I showed up for a meeting, they had one of the, the, the VPs there, like, well, we're also going to do this whole new thing over here. And we just, I just said, no, we got to stop. We got to stop. We got to step back. We can't just keep going this way. And, and it took two months of kind of back and forth and wrangling with them to reset all the expectations about what was getting built, what was being delivered when. Because, they, you know, if we hadn't done that, there was just no connection at all between what they were wanting to do and what we had already decided to build. It was like, these, these things will never connect if we don't stop you know, and reset everything. Did that answer? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, so you've worked as a freelancer. You've worked inside small agencies, large agencies. You discussed a little bit about presenting yourself um, and, and positioning yourself. Um, is there a particular example that um, you think freelancers might uh, find value in how you presented yourself? Two. Uh, they, they seem, they might seem silly and tiny, but they were, they were, there's a lot of value in doing these things. The first is all the communication is we, and it's never I. Uh, and that's, that's big. In all your writing, it's we can do this, let's do this. It's the collective tense when you're, when you're speaking and in your writing. The second one is, and he'll love this one, is when you're doing these conferences with people and you're not in face-to-face, -face, uh, make it look like you're kind of in an office. You know, the patio's great, the garage desk is awesome, but not when you're on a video call with a couple of directors and business people type stuff with suits on. Just, there, there's, there's a disjointedness there. So have that sort of professional demeanor in, in there. Um, if you are meeting them in person, put a collared shirt on. You know, guys, don't wear the, the sneakers. Just, I work from home. Don't trust me. I work from home. It's shorts. I'm lucky if I put shoes on half the time. But when I'm in face, when I'm in person, and, that, and in person means video too, have that presentation. It's, it's just important. Thank you very much. Uh, Pat Ramsey, crowd favorite. <laughs>